Good afternoon. I'm Zhu Yang Yu, Associate Professor in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering at UMass Law. In this talk, we will present our current research progress on Project C11, Development of a System Level Distributed Sensing Technique for Long-Term Monitoring of Concrete and Composite Bridges. This talk is given on behalf of the research team, including Professor Susan Faraji, Doctor Students Andres Biondi, Harsh Gandhi, Celso Ducabo, Ray Wu, and Li Dan Gao from UMass Law, Dr. Student Andrew Shank, and Professor Bill Davis from the University of Maine, graduate student Marshall Persaturo, and Professor Izan Gazenfri from the University of Vermont at Burlington. In this presentation, we will first introduce the project, then we will present our result obtained by using three different sensing systems. The problem we are trying to solve is the long-term bridge monitoring of bridges. We propose to synergistically use fiber optic sensors, video motion camera sensors, and electromagnetic sensors to monitor the structural behavior of bridges for understanding their aging and deterioration. Among the sensing technologies, Distributed fiber optic sensors and video motion camera sensors are capable of capturing the global response of bridges. Electromagnetic sensors are capable of capturing the local response of bridges. In this presentation, we will also use conventional strain gauges for calibrating fiber optic sensors and establishing a reliable baseline of bridges. Furthermore, we use distributed optical fiber sensors and strain gauges to measure static response of bridges. Video camera motion sensors and strain gauges are used to measure dynamic response of bridges. Electromagnetic sensors are from project 1.4. Fiber optic sensors are from project 1.5. Video motion camera sensors are from project 3.8. Before we apply the sensing technologies in the field, we already studied their performance in our laboratories. With the assistance and support from AIT bridges and MAN DOT, we then choose the newly constructed composite bridge in Hampton, Maine for field demonstration and data collection. In the following slides, we will present our results collected from the Grease Mill Bridge in Hampton, Maine. In the following slides, I would like to talk about how we use the distributed fiber optic sensing system to collect the strain data in the real time on this bridge. So sensing textile uh, was 22 meters long and 30 centimeters wide. Uh, as shown in this figure four, there are two fiber optic sensors embedded in this test sensing textile using the embroidery machine. The red color indicates this um, single mode fiber that will be used for the uh, strain data collection based on the Brion Optical Time Domain Amplification, BOTDA. And the orange color indicates the multimode fiber that will be used for temperature measurement uh, using the Distributed Temperature Sensing System, DTS. This video shows how a single bane fabricated sensing textile. After the sensing textile was fabricated, Ace J gauges were also fixed along the textile that we we'll use as the reference sensor. Before the girders were installed on the bridge, we went to Maine to install our sensing textile inside the girder. Figure 5 shows the sensing textile with the optical fibers embedded before installation. And figure 6, you can see that the sensing textile were installed in the girders by the epoxy. And then the optical fibers were connected to the integration system, the BOTDA and also this DTS, through this hole under this girder. And then on December the 30th, 2020, we went to Maine to conduct the first field test. Two trucks were a stop on position A, B, and C respectively on the bridge. And as you can see that 
because the sensing textile were installed on um, different girders. And then the optical fibers were installed as a U-shape uh, on this textile. So the section 1, as shown in the, on the top, and the section 2 response are expected to be uh, similar. So as you can see from the strain results collected from the optical fiber sensing system, so here, figure, five, figure 9 to figure 11, the x-axis shows the distance along from the starting point, and the y-axis shows the strain response in micro strain. You can see that because of the U-shape, so you can see res response from session 1 and the response from session 2, they are uh, similar. This is expected. And on December the 31st, we conducted the second um, day of the field test. This time, four trucks were um, stopped on the bridge. In the first test, the trucks were stopped closer to girder 1. And in the second set of tests, the trucks were stopped at the center of the bridge. So as expected, you can see that the trucks, because the uh, response, strain response were collected from girder 1, so you can see the response from figure 2, which is have a higher strain values compared with the results from um, the second test when the trucks were located on the center of the bridge. This slide summarizes the previous two days' field test results. So figure 14, again, so the blue, red, and yellow color of this curve shows the strain distribution when the truck were stopped at position A, B, and C respectively. As you can see that the peak strain value corresponding to the position of A, B, and C. And figure 15 shows the strain response um, when the trucks were located on gird, closer to girder 1, as indicated in the red curve, and also the other two curves, the blue and green one, indicates the strain response when the trucks were located closer to the center of the bridge. So, obviously, when the trucks were lo lo loading closer to girder 1, the girder 1 suffers higher strain response. So the preliminary results indicate that optical fiber sensing textile can measure the strain in the real time on this bridge. Results will be further compared with the strain gauges. After showing our fiber optic sensor measurements, let us take a look at our strain gauge measurements for baseline establishment and data comparison. In order to install strain gauges and sensing textiles at the bottom of three composite girders, the researchers at UMASO built a mock-up bridge girder and developed a sensor installation procedure, as shown in slide 11. Figure 16 illustrates the locations of A strain gauges installed on girder 1. As an example, 24 strain gauges were installed on three girders, namely girder 1, girder 3, and girder 5. It is noteworthy to point out that strain gauges were installed next to the optical fiber at the distance of 0.64 inches. In order to compare the strain measurements collected by optical fiber sensors and strain gauges, corresponding locations of strain gauges on the lens of the optical fiber were precisely measured in the laboratory. From our few data collected on December 30th of 2020, we found that out of 24 strain gauges, four strain gauges wires were damaged either during transportation or during installation of the composite girders. This experience indicates the importance of sensor redundancy for long-term bridge monitoring. After the bridge construction was completed, a vehicle life load test was carried out on December 30th of 2020 using two trucks with a total load of 125.3 kilopounds. A data acquisition system was collecting strains from 20 channels of strain gauges at the sampling rate of seven Hertz during this live load test. There are two parts in this live load test. In the first part, two trucks first park at three different locations on the bridge to produce static loaded response of the bridge. Then in the second part, the trucks ran on the bridge 
at two different speeds, 20 miles per hour and 30 miles per hour to produce dynamic loading response of the bridge. Prior to the live load test, the unloading response of the bridge was of course recorded as the baseline to extract the loading response of the bridge. In order to obtain the strain due to mechanical loading, we also had to compensate the temperature effect and to remove the noise from the raw data. For the static loaded response of the bridge in figures 22 and 23, we can see that the maximum mechanical strain occurs when two trucks part at point B, which is the mid-span. This is predicted by the influence line calculation. The maximum strain of girder one is greater than the maximum strain of girder three because one truck parked right above girder one. Furthermore, linearity in the static loading response of the bridge was also observed. If we use the response of the central girder, which is girder three, to establish the undamaged baseline of the bridge. Figures 24 to 26 show the static loaded response with two trucks parked at three different points. From the results in figures 24 to 23 on girder three, we can clearly see that the peak strain in strain distribution corresponds to the location of two trucks. When we compare the strain measurements by optical fiber sensors and strain gauges in figures 27 to 29, we can see that they are generally in good agreement in figures 28 and 29. The difference is due to inconsistent resolution, different locations, and the use of factory strain coefficient in optical fiber sensors. From the dynamic strain measurements induced by the trucks running on the bridge at two different speeds, modal frequencies of the bridge were identified. The first four modal frequencies of the bridge from the 30 miles per hour strain measurements were 0.33 Hertz, 0.67 Hertz, 0.73 Hertz, and 1.14 Hertz. The first four modal frequencies of the bridge from the 20 miles per hour strain measurements were 0.41 Hertz, 0.67 Hertz, 0.73 Hertz and 1.22 Hertz. Overall, these values are in good agreement. Um, and I will present our work in the next few slides on structural dynamics extraction using video cam. The primary advantage for using non-contact sensing for structural inspection is that the sensing modality does not require any preparation or sensor installation. And it provides a portable solution for quick bridge inspection with full field information at low cost. While the major challenge for this technique is to find a good static location to set up the camera. There is a pedestrian bridge right near the grist bridge, the, the grist mill bridge for, from where we have a very good field of view. But the technical issue is that the pedestrian bridge may suffer ground motion as well and it brings the noise to camera measurements. Therefore, we set up a portable system on Raspberry Pi to measure the ground motion at the same time when we collected the vibration data from the Bristol Mill Bridge. By doing this, we are able to quantify the influence from the camera and compensate the signals to be analyzed later as the uh, flow chart here demonstrates. So this slide shows the setup of the data acquisition for the field test. We used a low speed camcorder with 60 frames per second at the full resolution to acquire bridge data as the top photo illustrated, like this one. And this is the location of the camera. And uh, this is the, uh, the field of view. The Raspberry Pi microcontroller with two accelerometers is also adopted to monitor the ground motion um, like here, which measures up to 250 Hertz of a vibration and has a plus minus two G of range. So I need to point out here, that uh, um, the, uh, the ground motion captured by the Raspberry Pi has a very low magnitude. So roughly speaking is about 0 0.1 meters per square second. And the power spectrum at the bottom, at the bottom here shows a near white noise nature. This is a good indicator that the dynamics of the pedestrian bridge won't pollute to the dynamics to be extracted from the Gristle Mill Bridge. 
So after collecting the data, we apply phase-based motion magnification to enlarge the subtle motions of the structure at certain selected frequencies. For this, we need to apply bandpass filters at different frequency bands to, to amplify the invisible motions at each frequency range that we are interested in. So on the right-hand side, there are four different magnifications applied at four different frequency bands. For example, the first one, this one magnifies uh, the, the video uh, of the bridge deformation after the truck excitation, and it shows a perfect first banding mode uh, after the truck left the bridge, of course. The other three illustrates, the three lower ones, illustrate the higher order modes at which uh, all of the, um, um, the, these videos are with the 50 times of the magnification. So these information will be very useful later for bridge inspection and damage detection. And um, to estimate the motion of the bridge, we select the boxed area, this boxed area, as the region of interest. In, and we may take advantage of the cluster pixels selected to acquire a better estimation through the average. This result has been compared with the nearby strain gauges uh, that have been presented earlier in this talk by different people. We can clearly see from the waveforms of the truck passing by uh, for two different tests. So here are two different tests, especially the top one with an obvious spike of the vertical deformation. And on the right-hand side, the power spectra of the bridge response are plotted together with two different sensing techniques. And the first abandoned mode of the bridge is estimated at about 0.3-ish hertz. Some of the misalignment are purely due to the insufficient um, uh, frequency resolution, which is caused by the insufficient length of the signals that we acquired. Uh, nevertheless, without installing any sensors to the bridge, we are able to identify all the frequencies with an acceptable accuracy from a single camera. So this brings a lot of potential for rapid bridge state inspection in the future. In summary, we presented our experimental work from the Grease Mill Bridge in Hamilton, Maine, and demonstrated the few applicability and the practicality of a distributed optical fiber sensing system and the video motion camera sensor. Conventional strain gauges were used in data calibration and comparison. In this case study, installed fiber optic sensors can globally measure distributed static response of the bridge. Strain gauges can locally measure the both static and dynamic responses of the bridge. Video motion camera sensors can globally measure the dynamic response of the bridge. Data comparison among three different sensing technologies also gave us confidence in establishing a reliable baseline for long-term bridge health monitoring. At last, this research work is not possible without the support of many people. The TIDC competitive proposal funding is the main reason to make this work financially possible. Administrative assistance from Jim and Amanda at the TIDC is very much appreciated. Camila Garcia, Dr. Balaji Goplan, Jackson Avi from Single Bank North America for supplying us textiles and manufacturing sensing textiles. We thank them for their support. Ken Sweeney, Wendell Harrison, and Anson Deba from AIT Bridges for helping us to install sensors in the parking lot of AIT Bridges and for letting us use their power generator. A special thanks goes to Wendell for staying with us until 8.30 on October 6. We also want to thank Dale Peabody, Joe Stewell, two bridge engineers and two truck drivers from Man DOT for their assisting us on the vehicle light load test. Of course, the research work represented here does not represent the views of the U.S. Department of Transportation in Washington, D.C. Finally, thank you for your attention. <laughs>